When people look at the Mini Countryman, they think that it spits at the heritage of Mini as a brand. But what they don't know is that the Countryman in itself is just a year younger than the original Mini hatchback. The year was 1961 when Mini introduced the Countryman as the Austin Mini Countryman. Back then, it was a hatchback with an elongated tail, so it was a, a wagon, sort of. It looked kind of jokey, uh, and the wagon sometimes was built out of wood for more storage. And if you ask me, this Mini JCW Countryman is the best looking Countryman yet. Something that differentiates the Countryman from the rest of the Mini range is this grill. Uh, it's unique to the Countryman, it looks like a very angry man. Uh, but I think it works, and compared to the previous generation Countryman, this one looks a, a way better. The previous generation looks, looked a lot like a Mini Cooper hatchback that got stung by a bee and had an allergic reaction. It, it wasn't nice. This looks like it was designed for the purpose of being an SUV, so it's nice. I like it. So if you look at the Countryman from afar, or actually if you have no cars parked next to it, it looks like a regular Mini Cooper hatchback. The, the, the size of this thing becomes apparent when you're parked next to an actual Mini Cooper hatchback. And how I think Mini accomplished this illusion is with this blacked out piece of glass here. It, it hides how long and how tall the Mini Countryman is actually. And I like this design touch, you know, to kind of mask the real identity of this car. And uh, I've mentioned the, the term JCW a few times. And actually, what JCW means is John Cooper works. So who is John Cooper? Uh, condensed history lesson, John Cooper used to own a car manufacturer that built F1 cars. He approached Mini to say, I want to zeng your cars. And then they said, okay, you zeng our cars. And that's when Mini, the more zeng version became Mini Cooper. And they started to win several rally races. and therefore the racing heritage and pedigree of Mini came about. So when you see John Cooper works, it means that this is the most sporty and powered version of the Countryman that you can get. The Mini John Cooper Works Countryman is priced under $218,000. This car comes with a 2.0-litre turbocharged engine that produces 302 brake horsepower and 450 Nm of torque. The 8-speed dual-clutch transmission brings the JCW Countryman from 0 to 100 in 5.1 seconds. For more details on the Mini JCW Countryman or any other car, head on to sgcarmart.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. Before I move on to the boot space, I gotta say that I'm a bit sad that the Union Jack tail lamps are not available on this model. But if you look closely, there's a mini surprise for you. That's a nice touch. Anyway, what you get here is no kick sensor but an electric tailgate and inside 450 litres. Not class leading, but if you consider that this is a mini, 450 litres is pretty epic. Uh, let's see how it does for the anti-trolley length test. I don't have high hopes. Yeah, well, mo most of the handle is out. But definitely you can put it sideways, no problem. For the luggage, here's the thing. you. You can't even put the luggage this way. You have to put it like that. Yeah, no problems like that. But pretty much that's all the space there is in here. Anyway, uh, what else do you get in here? Basically just some side nettings and a 12 volt socket. And you can knock down the rear seats, but uh, you have to do it from the back seat. You can't do it from, from the back here. But there's a feature here I would like to show you. Mini actually included this thing. What it does, it's a bench. It's very reminiscent of uh, Land Rover in UK where people drive these to the horse races, park on the grass, open their boot, sit down and watch the horse races with the Queen and her corgis. Can we do it in Singapore? I don't think so, huh? Okay. To the back seat. On to the back seat. Okay, this is my driving position. I'm 1.8 meters tall, and as you can see, lots of leg room. There's a lot of foot space as well for, for the passenger on, on the side. 
headroom, understandably this is a SUV so you have a lot of headroom. Uh, you can also adjust how far back you lean. Uh, basically this is the mechanism for knocking down the rear seats but you know you can also adjust how, how, how you lean back. Equipment wise there are aircon vents thankfully but there's no climate control everything is controlled up front. Then you have two USB-C charging ports and isofix points. For the middle passenger this is slightly harder and because of the transmission tunnel the leg foot space is not that generous for the middle passenger but I would imagine for a 15-20 minute ride it should be okay. One cool design feature is this honeycomb grill design on the back of the driver and passenger uh, seat. Um, I think it's quite similar to what's in front of the car and there are holes so you know you can uh, disturb the driver. On to the front seat. Like I said in the Clubman review when Previously on SG Carmite Reviews And it is also unabashedly a mini What do I mean? Just look at the number of circles Look, the infotainment unit is encased in this circle thing you, When you enter the cabin of a mini, it is unabashedly a mini You know, there's circles everywhere The instrument cluster again is this very basic, you know, design here one thing about the JCW variant that I would have liked is for the speedometer here to be actually the ref counter because when you're in sport mode and going fast, what you want to know is actually what revs you are at so that you can down or up shift. But anyway, the speedometer has something cool. Uh, it goes up to 260, but at 200, you start to get this checkered flag pattern. It's almost like mini goading you into speeding crazily. Uh, let's not find out whether you actually reach there in Singapore. Anyway, you get a heads up display to show the speed and the rev, so that's good. Elsewhere, the materials here are nice soft touch materials. And interestingly, there's Alcantara leather not only on the seats, but on the armrest as well here. So that's a very nice touch. Speaking of seats, I like the side bolsters here. They cup you nice and tight, especially in an SUV when there's body roll, when you're going around the corners, this, this actually helps give you a bit more assurance to let you know that uh, you probably you can go a bit faster. Anyway, on to the infotainment system. Um, something that I didn't cover in the Clubman review is that this ring of light here changes according to what you adjust in the car. See, I'm now adjusting the, the temperature and it changes. And now for the volume, it changes as well. What do you mean? Uh, and the sound system, Harman Kardon, so that's not bad. And this connects to your iPhone wirelessly for wireless Apple CarPlay. Speaking of wireless and phones, this has a wireless charger. And it has this mechanism here that actually holds your phone in place. Possibly because uh, in the JCW, you might speed off suddenly and you don't want your phone to slide away. I have an iPhone 8 Plus, so that's a problem because it's too big. It doesn't fit in. I wish I could say that for other things in life. Anyway, one last thing, you get a sunroof. I understand uh, the need for a sunroof in other countries, but not in Singapore. And for this sunroof, one thing I don't like about it is it's not completely blocking out all the sunshine. So it's this mesh thing that allows sun sunlight to come in and it actually adds to the heat in the cabin. Yeah, but enough about the comfort of the car. A JCW Countryman is all about how it drives. So let's go find out how this thing is on the road. So, driving the JCW Countryman, I think I should just put it in sport mode all the way because uh, of the three modes, eco, normal and sport, uh, if you are just going to stick to normal or, or the, the, the eco mode, uh, then why are you doing buying a JCW Countryman? You should just go for the base model or the Cooper S version. So in sport mode, power is there, 302 brake horsepower, which is about 70 extra brake horsepower from the previous generation JCW, 450 newton meters of torque. It moves very quickly, uh, 0 to 100 is in 5.1 seconds. But my issue with the performance is the throttle response, especially when you're going from uh, a stock position. Um, 
when you floor the pedal off the line, the car takes a good two seconds on some occasions to, before it starts moving. It's almost as if the Mini is like, oh, you're looking for me? All right, it's time to go. So it's a bit weird uh, because you would expect the car to just quickly go when you need it to. And uh, there's launch control available, but you know you won't really do that on an everyday basis unless you, you know, you're just doing it for fun. So it's a, it's a bit weird when you need to quickly overtake uh, to switch to another lane when you are getting off the line from the traffic light. But then with a two second lag, it's, a, it's, it's, not, it's not nice, I feel. And sometimes on the expressway, when you need to merge into the lane quickly, and you need to speed up, I will find the throttle response finicky as well. I'm not sure if it's turbo lag or it's the throttle that is programmed to lag a bit because there are times when there is a delay of one or two seconds um, before the power kicks in. For example, let's try it now. Okay, for now it is immediate, but there are times when it really takes one second before um, power kicks in. It might be where the ref is at. I'm not sure. You, know, you have to really drive around this thing to figure it out for yourself. And as the JZW variant, I think that this car is set up for race day and track day. What do I mean is that when you're on the expressway going at a, a comfortable speed, 90 or 100, and if someone cuts in front of you and then slows down to like 70, um, this car would, and when you're on automatic on your gearbox, this car will downshift quite a bit and hold the revs up quite high. Presumably because if this was on a track and you slowed down to take a corner or take a bend, um, you will want the revs to be kept high so that when you exit the bend, you can power off very quickly. Uh, so, but in real life driving, if a hogger just comes in front of you and slows down, you're irritated that the guy cut you, and then you have the engine holding at a high rev, reminding you that he cut you, and it can be a bit irritating, uh, and it will be unsafe for you to utilize that rev and overtake him from, from the left. You know, don't do that. Uh, so that, that's something you need to look out for when you're on sport mode. It's a good feature to have, but uh, in real life driving, it might be a bit... Uh. Okay, what can I say about handling? I think Mini did a great job, you know. This car, although it's an SUV, it goes around the bends really well, really planted, very assured. Uh, hardly any body roll, you know. You would think that you're in a hot hatch rather than an SUV because body roll is kept to a minimal and with four-wheel drive, traction control, traction to all four wheels is there so it's just so fun to throw this car around corners you, you don't feel scared that you you lose control uh, there might be a tad bit of understeer just a little bit but oh so fun i love it and um what else can i say okay the only the only thing that i feel is weird is that when you're going at speed down streets, especially on the expressway, I find myself having to do a lot of micro adjustments to keep the car straight. You know, I, I feel that I'm getting a hand workout. It might be down to personal driving habits, I'm not sure. You just have to go and try this car for yourself to see whether you have that same problem that I do. So as usual, we have the will buy, won't buy, or go try the Mini JCW Countryman. For me, it is a go try because, as I said, this car, you buy it to put it in sport mode all the time because if you are just going to drive it under normal mode or the uh, eco mode, why bother spending the extra money buying this variant? Uh, you should just go for the Kit Cooper S. And for me, putting it in sport mode uh, means that in everyday driving conditions when you have to get into traffic, uh, you have to slow down for other people, um, it can be quite challenging because at 40, 50 kilometers per hour, the engine lets you know that it wants to go faster. It's going, let me go faster, faster please. But you can't, you know, if there's you know, 
slow cars in front of you, there's a lorry next to you, there's a bike coming up to your side, you can't really go fast. And then after a while that might get to you, then you would just switch it to normal mode so that the, the engine will stop goading you into going faster. Then what's the point, right? You're, you bought, bought this car to go into sport mode. To me, you should try it and then see what type of driver you are. If you are the type of driver who knows how to utilize the car well and utilize the car's speed and maneuverability well, the, the JCW Countryman is an automatic buy for you. Uh, for the rest of us regular average Joe drivers, I would say the Cooper S Countryman is the better pick because uh, it doesn't have the extra power, then you don't pay for the extra power and um, the engine just doesn't keep on goading you into going faster. It, it performs when you need it to perform, but it doesn't make you feel that you're letting the car down. Okay, this car kind of makes me feel like I'm letting it down and that's why it's a gold try for me. So that was our review of the Mini John Cooper Works Countryman. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and also comment in the comment, down, uh, comment box below to tell us whether you will buy, won't buy or go try the JCW Countryman. Don't forget to click the bell notification icon so that you will be notified every time we upload something new. So, uh, till the next review then, bye! -bye.